Um, we got a lot of great examples of address only leads and how to actually approach them. And we're going to go through it all. So, so feel free to, to share as you know, you with your own experience of address onlys, but a lot of people, you probably look at an address only and dismiss it, right? Like I, I get it. Cause there's so many other leads in there to think about and focus on, but a lot of people dismiss the address only and actually address only. We just got so many testimonials of people that have gotten actual sales from address only leads. It's just, you got to do something and be consistent at doing it. Um, and so we're going to share a bunch of fun examples today that I've compiled from the street text insider group and from the street text Academy course. Um, you know, another thing with those address only is the retargeting side of this in the future, right? Because you're going to want to stay consistent and in front of them, but how, how do you stay consistent with your brand outside of the pixels? Um, it's going to be a lot to do with your mailers if you're actually sending out anything in the mail. And some of you, just maybe some of you have picked up on the fact that a lot of you can pull up tax records, find the homeowner's name, and what do I always say? What do I always say when you find someone's name? Facebook Leon. them. What? Facebook them, friendly. Facebook them, we're not stalking them, we're Facebooking them. We're just, we're just being friendly and genuine and authentic and leading with value and service. And we're, question, we're asking them a, a basic question. You, just, you guys got to remember, there's no harm in sending a friend request because if they don't accept you, no big deal. But guess what? By you sending a friend request, you're now getting the opportunity to drop them into a list. Call that list address only. And that list will grow. And, and, and definitely you're, you're going to find that some of these will actually accept your request and begin a conversation with you on Facebook. Any, anybody have any experiences with that so far? Marcus, I think for some of the new people, could you show them how you put them into friends list? Because I don't think everyone knows that. There's yeah, some no, I'll absolutely show them. And I, and I think it's, it's obviously, it's important. Everybody know what we're talking about here. We'll, we'll, we'll give it a, f a few minutes. Usually it's a couple minutes. Let's just have some fun and talk before we get right into the mastermind. How is it that Steve always asked me to send him the, the mastermind link? <laughs> He's the owner of the company. Come on, Steve. I'm going to share it. That's why he can do that. It's so funny, though. Like, it's every single week. I'm like, you, you'd think you'd get it by now. Zoom is pretty straightforward and easy. Hey, I didn't ask for it this week. Steve, thanks for chiming in. I'm, where, why are you not with your, your crazy background screen? Well, you can hear my phone's ringing. I'm multitasking today, so I'm in and out, like not in front of the computer the whole time. Okay, that's all right. I miss seeing your face though. Okay, so the address only, obviously, so we're, we're kind of working off the template and there's several templates in street text, but this, this could apply to anybody running a dynamic lead capture funnel. When you're going for, a home value or to see if someone could sell your home, the first thing that we always ask for is an address, right? Because that's going to be the most consistent piece of information that's provided. Someone's willing to provide that information before they provide their email, before they provide their information about their home, time frame for selling, name, phone number, right? Because it's done in that sequence. Are you guys all following me? We will build a capture that is Facebook lead ads that captures all of that up front using the, the map because the map has got the highest click to contact ratio we've ever seen. And nobody's been able to beat that. I've looked at so many different companies out there and trying to do the seller funnel. No one can beat that. And actually I'm starting to see companies trying to replicate that. <laughs> if you've noticed, probably some of you may have in the newsfeed, they're trying to copy street text. So the reason why we're doing this is because there is something to be said about capturing this, this one piece at a time. And you're going to naturally weed out people that way. And then, coming full circle for those people that are just coming back on and Steve you're here now can you hear me can you unmute yourself for a second I just have to make sure you're there okay. yep what's up awesome not not oh. Steve Steve Stephen Whiting Steven I'll call him Steven um oh gotcha okay sorry I was just pushing Steve no I was just pushing for like helping people understand the difference between why we capture leads dynamically using the the Facebook conversion pixel versus a Facebook lead ad and capturing all their information up front. And that we, at some point we'll, we'll have, a, I think the opportunity to, to create the same sort of, sort of conversion ad with the, the Facebook map, 
but do it with a Facebook lead capture. I think that'll be a, a great test. Um, but the address only is, is one of those leads that most people dismiss. So what I wanted to, to, to share with you is who, anybody have a strategy that they want to talk about or anybody been using the address onlys? Lori, did you, I think you're unmuting yourself. George, have you been doing anything? And what about you guys, Leon? I'm gonna, I'm gonna start picking on people, Wendy. We I'm have so a form letter that we send out and we send out the comp, we send out three of the best comps and then we use YLOPO and create a listing rocket and we send that in the mail and I put all kinds of stickers on the envelope. Good job, great first step, blah, 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 blah. Love it. I'm gonna mail it out or if it's close enough, put it together in a decent package and drop it off. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I think figuring out a system early is an important process because if you, if you don't, it gets quite overwhelming, right? So um, we're gonna go over several examples, but I think for everybody here, it's just finding something that you could do consistently. So Marcus? Yes, go ahead, Janky. I'm new to um, Street Text, just started, but I have uh, to tell you with address only, what I've done is exactly what Wendy said. I actually um, put them on Facebook. I mean, I added them to my business page on Facebook. I tried to do the tax record first and then add them. And then we put them in our five point database and did the remarketing through YLOPO. That started a conversation just late last night. So stay tuned. <laughs> Love it. Love it. I'm going to start skip tracing. Mojo Dialer just did a major update. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take all my address only, create a separate folder, just address only, obviously, and skip trace it and see what happens. And then as the information comes out of that, pretty much the same thing, start hitting them with a direct mail out postcard or something. Or if I get a good hit for something that gives me the um, email addresses or a good phone number, um, from truepeoplesearch.com. Thank you, George. Um, get something out to them. That's smart. Anybody else doing anything like that? I know why Lopo is, a, is a, an awesome opportunity with that. And Steve, I know you've been doing a, a few things with people on retargeting, right? As well? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think the retargeting for the most part, um, we can retarget obviously anybody that even if they don't give an address is even if they just get even if we just get a click on the website so the retargeting for the most part is more branding like branding the testimonials um making sure you just kind of stay front and center with all those leads especially just over a period of time right so they just don't lose sight of you um but it's not necessarily address only specific it's just more of any lead just make sure that you know yeah you don't get lost yeah, I mean, let's let me share a few examples that I've I found in the insider group, and that is this will kind of help give you a an opportunity to kind of see what's even possible. So here's um here's one Chris Williams built, and I and I think you got to find the template and then stick with it, um, and then you got to figure out a system in terms of how much time it's going to take you as well, because ultimately you want to get the system. I always talk to people about get your systems in place before you up your ad budget, because if you try to do this when you're lead flow is just massively coming in you get quickly overwhelmed so it's almost like process 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 systems 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 feel free to turn off your ads and budget for a while you're always going to be able to get that algorithm figured out again in your low cost lead if you're if you're beta testing like we talk about but once you figure out something like this this is extremely valuable so here it says you know dear thomas and pamela they actually found the tax records my thank you for reaching out requesting home valuation for 1840 caps and drive my goal is to provide you with the most accurate valuation with no strings attached, but I'm sure you know it's impossible to offer an exact number without seeing your property for myself. With that said, I'd like to offer you the internet's best guess as to what your home might sell for. So it's cool because they put the picture in there of the home. As you can see, the internet has no idea what your home is actually worth and given the unique nature of your home, it's best to leave the valuation up to a, uh, to a professional after a 10 to 15 minute complimentary assessment of your home. And you can start changing this wording to give it to give the you know the current times right the virtual stuff that you want to connect with but here they go and basically say zillow thinks your home is worth this realtor you know Zillow thinks your home is worth four hundred nine thousand. realtor actually estimates it's four five twenty nine there's there's a hundred and twenty thousand dollar discrepancy right there truly i guess it's around 409 so similar because obviously truly is owned by zillow right 
Um, Redfin suggests it might be around 559, and homes.com thinks your home is worth 478. So that's an amazing type of mailer template. I'll just stop that for a second. Any, anybody like this one or have used something like this? Because this is all found in the, the search feature of the insider group. There's actually probably a dozen or more templates you can go there and find. Anybody, as everybody know that, if in the Street Text Insider group, there's a search feature. So you just type in address only and you can, you can find, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about Donna Swansea's letter shortly because that was like the most popular commented one. Everybody know that in the insider group? I did not know that. So I'm glad you said that. Well, all right. Um, and Ira and Troy, feel free to chime in on anything that that's kind of coming in your mind too. Cause I know you guys, Troy, you kind of initiated the, the address only conversation. Is there, did you find anybody that has been working the address only there? Well, there's, there's lots of people working address only. I always say address only is gold, right? But always, I would, my approach to address only is a lot of people get panicked because they have so many. And I'm like, first deal with your emails and your phone numbers, because those are the people who have actually given you full information. Then time box and go, okay, let's say Fridays is my address only days. And that's the day I'm going to send out something, right? So mailers, um, I find what I've seen that works really well is like, even if you have time for it, like just a handwritten note, you know, reach back to me. And like, the big thing is, is like, who does that? <laughs> Being the person that actually follows through on it actually floors people, right? They're like, oh, I thought I was just going to get an automated uh, evaluation and suddenly you're reaching out to me. You did this nice, thoughtful handwritten note and that kind of speaks really, like it speaks volumes to people, which is a big thing. So there's, you know, there's lots of different little things you can do. Um, send out cards. Um, I've seen even some, let's see who's on here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I have an agent in Vegas and she actually goes out and I don't know how this works right now, but it's like a cookie service. And it, she has like this little note and it's like this little cookie get, gets wrapped up and that goes out to their mailbox and they got this like really yummy cookie in the mail. So things that kind of like shock people that grab their attention I think is the bigger or the, or the things that actually work. So if there's something local that you can do that, um, you know, would grab their attention that way, doing something different. That's why, like, even on the virtual CMAs, we, it shocks people because it's something they haven't seen before. It's like, whoa, they're showing me like a video of my home evaluation. Like, oh, that's really cool, right? So always being unique and different than just everybody else. You know, I wouldn't go out there and go, well, here's the latest numbers in the market. <laughs> right. Cause that's like, oh, boring, right. It's not personal. It's not, you know, that sort of thing. So if we do something that has a little bit more of a personal touch, obviously you want to make sure that something that's, as you just said, like systems process, that's easy to do, you know, like unless you don't have a ton of leads coming through and you've got that time, but if you have a ton of time, then you've got to look at your system and your process, that what's going to be um, personal but it's also not going to take you a massive amount of time. If you're spending like half hour just to like write hand it a note, that's probably not going to work out for you. Right? So what's quick and easy, but still personal that you can reach out and that will get a response out of them and always have like a clear call to action. What would you like them to do? Do you want them to like connect with you on Facebook? Find me on Facebook or, Hey, I have this really great group on Facebook. I'd love to invite you in. Yeah. You know? That's smart. And, and, and also realize when you do friend request somebody and you drop them into that address only list, I would actually format your letter that you send out to let them know that's what you did because it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay and remain in their message request folder. And a lot of people don't know that. So until you actually let them know that there is a message request folder and to check it, um, they're more likely when they open that piece of mail to do that if you actually let them know that's what you've done. But you first have to start doing that. Um, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna share some examples with you, but before we move forward, let's just do a quick poll to see what, if people are doing anything. I'm gonna launch a poll. And I'm just curious, um, who's sending out address only letters? It, if you know if you are, say I am. And if you aren't, 
well, nope, but I need to. Hey, one other Better thing. Start um, doing it. This one, this one's um, Stephen Whiting. Um, you know, you sat there and it showed us how to do the, uh, and I'm not picking on you. This is actually, you know, the set up, forget a thing, because I did this. Could you hit real quick on the retargeting campaign so people know when it runs as far as ad costs? Because I set one up um, and I only spend like $3 a day is what I have for it. I don't even max my budget, but I don't think a lot of people understand that it's not spamming everybody. It's only hitting the folks that came through. So for people who don't have a, like my postcards cost me probably about 55 cents to send out or something like that. The, the difference of what I save in budget on the retargeting and it does kind of drive them back into the site, but that's your baby. So um, if you could just kind of let the group kind of get an idea or refresher on that. Yeah, thanks, Julia. And if anybody's looking for the retargeting mastermind, we've done a couple of them now, one with John, one with myself um, on how to set them up. And if you want those, uh, even if you just go back to the inside of group afterwards and just say, hey, Steve, can you send us the inside or uh, the mastermind or retargeting? Just post that and I'll make sure that you guys all get that again so you can, you can watch it. But it definitely does break the numbers a little bit because it's, it, to Leon's point, like I know when a couple of people have launched the retargeting, they get confused. They're like, hey, I'm not even spending my, my max daily budget. I've set like three bucks a day or five bucks a day or whatever it is. And the reason... Um, reason it doesn't do that is it's, it can only show, it'll only show your retargeting ads to people that are interacting with your, with your ads. So you gotta, you know, the audience is just so much smaller, right? Like when we go out to Facebook and we're say we're looking either a seller ad or a buyer ad, we can target thousands and thousands of people. So it's easy for Facebook to get that ad out. Um, but with the retargeting, let's say we've got 150 people that we can target. Now we have to wait. Facebook has to wait for those 150 people to be on. So one might be here and then another one's at this time. So you end up paying a fraction of, of your budget to go after and to stay in front of those people on an ongoing basis. So that's why retargeting is so powerful, but sometimes it's confusing because it looks like your reach is really low and it looks like your budget is really low, but it's just because Facebook's incrementally spending that money as it can. So it functions very, very different than our other ads. And that's actually why I've told people, a lot of people, you could just set $1 a day on those ads. I would actually launch... If you use our testimonial template, the one that we refer to in the mastermind, you could probably set up three or four different testimonials, put them all at $1 a day. And now people are seeing, you know, your, your audience are seeing different testimonials of you on an ongoing basis. And you're, you'll probably never even spend a dollar per day on each ad. So you're probably collectively maybe spending a dollar per day. So for 30 bucks a month, you're just staying in front of all these people on an ongoing basis and you're circulating different testimonials of different copy. So here's another one that I haven't talked about in a while, but I think is so powerful if you have a little bit of time. Like if you get used to how to, how, if you get used to running the, um, the retargeting ads through our system, and we can even cover actually this on our custom ads class that we run on Tuesdays now too, is doing a market update, a once a month, market update video which you can use for both your uh your retargeting and then also for your mailers so i mean mail like your mass email so you should really i mean i'm sure all of you are doing it anyways like once a month send everybody a market update video but now you just do a bomb bomb video whatever you just talk about the market this month i mean this is the, you know a crazy time to do it too right because people are really going to tune in to see what the market stats are like but don't just do it as a bunch of stats do it as a video so you're talking about it I bet you if we take those videos right now and put them on the retargeting video, lots of people will click on them and watch those videos. And they'll probably get a lot of organic exposure right now too. Like even though the retargeting on audience is seeing it, it gets shared out or it gets liked and other people see them. So we should actually cover that on our Tuesday class, um, how to do that. And sorry, I know I'm talking a lot. I just want to segue just ever so slightly. So Leon, if you got something on the retargeting, come right back to that. Do you mind if I just share my screen really quick, Marcus? Uh, I just want to show. I'm actually in Steve Skeet's account. So, you know, thanks Steve for, I didn't tell you I was going to do this, but just in here, here, just on the address only, something that you probably don't know, it's a hidden feature. And Donna does this. We've talked a lot about Donna Swansea and the things that she does. What you can actually do. So one of the strategies that I know a lot of people do is when they send out a mailer, you know, um, you know, you get an address only and uh, you don't have all the information and you send out a mailer and you say something along the lines of, um, basically, you know, come on back, come and complete your, your request, right? Cause people will come back and they're going to fill in the rest of the information. 
But when you use a street text URL, it's pretty long and it's difficult to put on, on the, uh, the mailer. But Donna does this. So if you, if you actually go into streettext.com, uh, let's just say you're anywhere in the site and you'll see the word boost. Just, and I, you know, this is just for you guys here right now, put in the word pages behind it like this. So let me just, actually I'll go back for a second. Let's just say I was somewhere like on the dashboard. I'm going to type in, I'm going to get rid of the word dashboard and I'll type in pages because you can't find this normally. But if you hit enter, you're going to see a page that looks like this. And this is really, it looks a little confusing. If you've only ever launched one ad, you'll only ever see one here. But every time Steve's essentially launching a new buyer campaign, it's building on a new landing page for him, a new landing page and a new thank you page. And if you ever want to view these and know which one you're looking at, you can click view and it'll take you to what that page was, right? But what you can do here beside those, which is really cool, like if I viewed this one here, you could see, hey, this is this particular page, like an early notification list. But you can actually click on something that says add mass. And when you click this, you can put in a, any name you want. So streettext.com slash web slash whatever you want, right? So you could say... Um, seller evaluation or home yeah, value. Yeah, seller evaluation. Exactly. I won't save this for, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, you probably want to say something for the, like, home value. Home value for the... Yeah. So whatever you want. It could be home value, home value, value, value like value. if you're doing it for the buyer side. But this is going to be for the sellers, right? You're going to probably do it. But yeah, you could, yeah, home value. You could do your city home value, whatever else. But if I click create, now you could send people to this URL slash home value. And then that way, if you actually use that on your postcards, it's way easier for people to type that in, go and find your page, uh, and then fill in the information. And Donna has this all the time. Like the reason she always sends out postcards to her address only is a percentage of them then come back to the website and fill in yeah. the rest of the information. They come in again as an as a updated lead, and now she's got all of their additional information. So you're going to do that. Um, I hope this is a handy little tip for everybody that's on the mastermind. You can change it to pages. You can see your pages and you can add masks and then that, and you can do it for any particular page. So Steve's maybe not like the home evaluation would be an example like this. Look for something that says registration page. And if I was to say, view this page, now you'll see this is more like your traditional home value ad. And you can do it on any one of our ads and then click add mask. And these get built you'll see these created after you launch an ad. So you launch an ad first, or you've got an ad running, you can come in here, you can see it, and I could add a mask and customize this URL. So hopefully that's a helpful little tip. And sorry, Leon, if you need to ask anything on retargeting. Um, but yeah. No, I, how many of you, by a show of hands on here, thinks that's amazing? And we'll I, use that. I have a quick question for Stephen on that. Is it, um, you know, so on the ads on Facebook, and you know, Tong and Oxy is 6,000 people. So I have agents that I've trained that are now competing against me. And whenever I do something new, they start doing something new. Well, last night I noticed my competition is now on street text. And if you guys are here, glad to turn you on to street text, but they're literally running the same copy ads that I'm running. So up at the bottom, you know, where it says street text on the, on your, when your ads on Facebook, can you mask that? Or is that something that you guys don't want masked? Well, it, it's not that we, we, you can actually run some ads that don't show it. Um, the reason we can't mask it is, is that uh, Facebook itself has to, like, they, they want to make sure, there was a lot of people early on in Facebook's history that would say a URL that really wasn't the URL they were sending people. So but if, we, if you ever change that or force that to be changed to something else, they'll, they'll ban your ad because it has to be exactly where it's going unless you run some of our different ad types. So for instance, share my screen again. And if you don't mind, I'll just be in your account. If, um, yeah, you'll see, that's why I launched different. I did all buyers ads last, like I turned them all on last night cause they're doing seller ads. And I'm like, I'll just out add them. I'll just make my ad. I'll just put a hundred dollars a day and they can hey, do $9 Steve, a day. You know? Steve, before, yeah, yeah. before you get worried about other people running your ad, remember at the end of the day, Facebook is determining within the first few hundred people reached how that ad is going to consistently perform moving forward. And you're not competing against that, that guy or anybody who's on Facebook because once that lead comes in, it's yours. So ultimately, you could run as many of those, especially if you're split testing. Remember what we were talking about? Whether you run three or five or 10 of those same exact ads, you're just looking for the highest relevancy and then you're turning everything off. We have three or four variations that are crushing it on the seller side. So just understand, like you can run an equity version of it. You can run that one that says, enter your address, receive your home value. 
but even in the, even with that one that most people are running, everybody can win. I have I have yet to see an oversaturated market. And we have you know a dozen or more agents here in Kelowna using it and consistently crushing it. So Facebook Marketplace is a fair game. It's really more about you being an ad manager and turning an ad off if it's underperforming. That's all, right? That's that's the key. So I would never worry about who's running it. Just, just well, yeah, but you have you have a lot more people. I mean, we have. 20 agents that live in a community of of 6,000 people so You're also I mean, a 15 mile radius true, true but that's what we're all doing i mean i get it i'm, I'm just so well, how many people are in that 15 mile radius um probably 15 15,000 maybe a little more there's plenty. And remember, this is all uh, passive scrolling on their newsfeed. So it's only going to touch people who are actually interested. So actually, yeah. saturation is a good thing because at some point, someone's going to cl click on it because they want to know what their home value is. And that's hopefully it's yours. But you can run variations of that. There's the equity conversion template. And then there's the one towards the bottom and your address received your home value. And that's where you can get unique and different because that's where you put your own picture of the area. Um, Stacy Sebastian's running it right now with a beautiful picture of the Bend, Oregon mountains, and she's getting like $2 emails. So you don't have to use just that one. That's why you guys want to be aware of the, the 30 plus ad templates that we have. It's only as good as your ability to split test. If you're only running one template all the time, you know, you got to realize like, that's why we now have custom ad classes and ad tweets classes. These are all here for you to actually start testing it. Um, Cause there's so many places to go and get great performance with buyers, sellers, listing. Which I, I never figured out. Like I, I showed you last night, I sent you that screenshot. Every time I tried to create a new ad, I got an error message. I haven't had time to figure out what was going on with that. But. Yeah, we're, we're seeing that. And I think the, the support team's looking at that um, right now. It's, there's a little error that comes up, but it's still, if you look at your ad manager and you go to your Facebook ad, it's still launching. Oh so, yeah. I mean, Steve, if you have a specific issue, just make sure the support team's looking at that and they'll. Support at streetfix.com anytime. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then it'll, we'll fly it all to Jonathan Whiting. <laughs> no, but but we will if there is actually a problem on your side we'll, we'll look into that ASAP. i'm just joking so one thing i want to add here real quick i'm going to share my screen is that on that uh sorry back to the masking of the url i want to give you guys an example of what a postcard campaign can look like with that built right in so here is let's see uh can you can you see that no not yet now uh, we can. now we can you can see it do you see the get your free estimate home today? Yep. Your home estimate today. Well, look right under go to, it's got the masked URL. So it's streettext.com slash web slash Corden Villa uh, Village Property Newman. Now he's making different ones for different neighborhoods. So what he's done is he's actually masked his URL in a specific way, but then he can then send that postcard to that neighborhood with that URL that looks like it's super relevant to them. And then they can go in and plug that information. And what's great about this, this is what Matthew and Nicholas is doing. And he's getting tons of people coming through that were address only submissions. But when they came in the second time, they were complete submissions, like all the way to the, I want to request an appointment stage. So they are way more qualified because, and then the trust is there because they came through the first time and they just put the address in. But when they come through the second time, they're, they're uh, very, very qualified because now they're, they're getting it, usually they're getting it anywhere between one month to three months after having coming in as an address only. And now they're ready to, to uh, engage with the market. So this is a great strategy right now, today, for all the home sellers that were waiting until this COVID thing kind of settled this summer, which is looking like it's about to, you know, every, like the, the lights shining, the, um, the market separate governments are saying, okay, it's like, we're looking like it's gonna be May. We're wanting to bring uh, business back. So a lot of homes are going to come to market uh, May and June. And so this is a perfect time to be sending these postcards out and getting all those people through. Really, I'd, I'd be doing it right away. I'd be getting out as fast as possible personally. But uh, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an exciting, exciting opportunity to really make, make the most of your database right now. Well, John, I'll give you an example in our neighborhood we have received so many mailers from realtors and I know that ton of them are being wasted. Why? I know the person next door to me just moved in like literally last week. I know the three people across the road are renting. Like 
I know that those mailers are wasted. So look at your address only like this. You are specifically sending it to someone who raised their hands. We're all about stretching your marketing dollars across the year. This was somebody that raised their hand and said, I want this info. And you're actually targeting someone who raised their hand. Instead of like, I look at all the mailers, this person actually physically delivered all the mailers to everyone's door. So the amount of time they spent to do our entire neighborhood, all the printing they did, like I could have went out and said to her, hey, you should, you should come to Street Decks because we can get you the addresses of the people who actually raised their hands and wanted this info and you could mail directly from them from your home every day on a Friday from this time to this time. So it's a strategy that's always worked. Mailers work because they keep you present and keep you in mind, but let's target the people. Like I, I saw on here that 60% of people aren't using those address only. Um, and I mean, right now where you have some downtime and I'm seeing that I've received three myself in the last week or so. Um, and I know half of them on the point, half of them are ending up in the recycling bin because the person is not the right person to be receiving that mailer. So think of it like that. That's amazing. One of the things, Tony Jones, I'm going to actually use you as an example of pretending you're an address only. Okay. <clears throat> because we're not friends yet and we're about to become friends. So what you can do is obviously pull up tax records for those of you in the States and find a quick, you know, who, who owns this home. And so if you do your homework, what you're going to look at is you're going to just search for them and write, here's the thing. Most people stop at the search on top, <clears throat> right? They just say, they type in the person's name um, and they're like, well, there's a lot of Tony Jones out there. But the idea is you're supposed to filter the results. So you're actually supposed to go to people and then city, right? And obviously, Tony is a, a, a top search because we're all, you know, connected on Facebook. So if you type in the city, you're more likely to find that homeowner and it narrows down the search. Now, here's where it gets interesting because a lot of people, they'll like, they'll send a message or do something. But what you need to actually do is you want to add them as a friend because there's going to be a good percentage of them that don't accept your friend request. That's totally cool. This is, this is you know, you're going to be gaming this a little bit. But when you add them, a lot of people don't realize that you can add them into a list. Okay, right? The list. The list is really important. I have a bunch of lists and I've, I've talked about this for a long time. So hopefully some of you have picked up on the, on the Facebook being a CRM. But if I wanted to create a list called address only, address only leads, right? Now all of a sudden, Tony's in that list, no matter what, whether or not she accepts my friend request or not. And I'm gonna follow up by sending Tony a message as well. Hi, Tony. Obviously, I would, I, if I was taking the time, I'd probably send her a video message as well, okay? Now, you don't stop there because friend requests, dropping the list, sending the message, now you create your mailer to reflect what you just did. And you're not gonna say, hey, I, I dropped into your list, blah, 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 blah. But you're gonna tell them, check your message request folder. You know, I'll make sure everyone gets a chance to know me. And then when you're going into your home, um, Facebook page and you go to friends list. Now, everybody you drop into that list is going to be in there. And there's, there you are. So you are not friends yet, but once we're friends, boom, you'll drop into that and I'll be able to actually post directly to you. But it, and more importantly, it's going to start holding you accountable to seeing these people as, you know, these are actual human beings that you want to connect with. And you never know, you might have mutual friends, likes, interests, values. They might see you know, a whole bunch of things that they really like about you and you, you get connected and it's just because you took that extra step and then you're following up with mailers, you're going to do the retargeting. It's all about you creating influence in their life and you have to take the initial step or else it's nothing ever is going to happen. Yeah. And that's to the point that Steve was talking about, like he feels like maybe it's a saturated market. Realistically, this is a numbers game. And while we are selling a service, we're ultimately selling ourselves. 100%. Right, and it's being likable. Why? That's why, why we always go back to the know, like, and trust model. You have, number one, you have to be knowable. How are you going to do that? You you can't be someone something that just gets tossed in the in the garbage like most mail does, because most people are going to go uh, recycle, 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 recycle. Right, unless it stands out. So the envelope, something to do with a company that has like a an uh, handwritten. Because you can hire companies now. I've seen that do the handwritten look, even though it's 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 done through a computer. So it makes it fill. You're going to put the stamp on there. But most of the time, if you throw something that you know will get tossed in the mail, like that's the same experience. 
So if you're gonna work this system, make sure you use your personal touch. And if you begin with this type of homeowner tax record, find them on Facebook, drop them into a list, send them a message, send them a piece of mail, and then you're gonna do some retargeting as well on top of that, wow. Who else is doing that? Not many. You're, you're already separating yourself as the top 1%. Right? I love this idea. I love this postcard idea. We could even put that ugly map on it, you know, that everybody clicks on. Click on. Hey, you clicked on this, remember? Right. And then like, say, finish, you know, finish or whatever. And then on the other side, make sure your Facebook picture is up there so that they can connect everything together. That's so good. Right. And so what you kind of tell them in that piece of mail is, hey, sent you a friend request. I make sure everybody gets a chance to meet me. Check your message request folder. Right. And, you, you know, you can say something. You clicked on this ad. Right. You, you know, I didn't get all the So we can have fun with that. And maybe we can all put examples in the insider group of variations of this and find something we all could work with. But that's just something to, to think about, because your greatest place of influence is always going to be the news feed. Just like they found you through the sponsored post, that was the business page in their news feed. You paid Facebook for that, but coming full circle, your greatest place of influence is when, when you get people to connect with you on Facebook, because once you become friends, that's where they're spending an hour or more. That's where they're on Facebook and Instagram, scrolling down their news feed. Until you create that type of influence, you're just gonna be relying on the Facebook business page. Yeah. Good stuff. I love the friends list. I have a lot of lists and uh, it's pretty awesome. The first is in a list because then you can go to their list and you can, you can see what they're posting and you can engage with them because you want to stay connected with them. So that was the first thing I did. And then all of these leads you want to put in a list so that you can retarget them and just post just to them, not your 5,000 Facebook friends. So I love it. Good you stuff. Know, and you know what? You're going to have lists for multiple purposes. You're going to have lists for your buyers. You're going to have lists for your listing, listing leads. You're going to have lists. Because once you start tapping into street text and all the infinite potential of different variations of ads you can run, there's going to be, you know, just curious leads, leads that you talk to, leads that you haven't talked to. But you got to start somewhere, right? Got to start somewhere. And I think one of the best things we can all look to do is, is create a, a connection that's why we talk about bomb bomb when we got videos because unless you get face to face everything in communication is shifting today to virtual technology so you have to leverage body language and tonality that's everything everything um, and the only way you can do that is by trying to find a way to connect with them virtually and so if you don't have the information you got to actually go out there proactively and try to get a connection established and with an address only there's no better place to do that than on facebook send a friend request drop them into a list and send them a message through video, because remember, Leon, we talk about free 99, Facebook Messenger, free 99. You don't need BombBomb Bomb to do that. You guys following me here? Can I how, many, how many of you are going to start using friends lists? Give me, give, me a th give me a heads up. And if you're scared, that's okay. We can teach you. I get it. Like it, it, it could, you could feel like it's stalking, but you know what? It really isn't, because if you're creating... Uh, you're trying to be genuine in your approach and it's authentic. It's an, it is a numbers game, just like you talked about. Some people won't accept it. That's okay. Just keep on dripping on them with, with mailers and content and re retargeting. I have an out-of-state realtors list too, which is nice because then you can keep in contact with everybody that you love all over the country. And, you know, sometimes they have investors that want to buy in Las Vegas and stuff like that. Lists are awesome. Yeah, so when you, when you make a friend request, you add a note to say that you're making the request. I mean, you obviously could add that in your, in your um, street text next to that person, because you can, you can save those addresses as contacts too, right? Just take a note on that, because you, there's, they're gonna be filtered into address only, but you can actually save it as a contact if you're proactively putting in their information, adding in their name, adding in their, the information that you can find. You know, and there are services, you know, Leon uses it and Spokio and all these other services that you're willing to do. So at the end of the day, like these leads are gold, but they're all like, you might see them as trash and garbage or, but even, you know, even diamonds start as cool. Right. And that's, that's the key is to think about the address only as it's only as good as your ability to work it. Um, Steve, you can talk about Zapier and HomePod if you want. 
Sure. And I just want to make a quick update. Uh, I do apologize for everybody that was watching my demonstration of the ad mask. It has been informed to me that I have a different view than everybody else has. So we, uh, because I announced it and I showed everybody that cool view, we're going to make sure that you guys get a view like that too, so that you can actually add the mask. And apparently it's a really quick update on our end, so it won't take long. Um, hopefully today, short in the next little bit here, we'll just have that available to you. So if you do want to use the add mask function, um, uh, you will see it much more similar to the way I showed it. So, so apologies, I was just looking at it a little bit differently. Yeah, and, and Steve, real quickly before you go into the, the home bot, someone asked, can you do this on your business page? You cannot do this on your business page. Your business page is where likes are. It's where you create, a, it's where you pay Facebook for, right? And a lot of people, um, unfortunately, they put so much work into their business page, but it's not being followed and it's not in their newsfeed. So ultimately, the, the truth is your greatest place of influence is always going to be your personal Facebook. And that's where people know, like you and trust you anyways, because that's where, you know, you're actually posting what's, what's important to you, your values, right? And, and, I, and I think at the end of the day, you got to be, you got to be okay with, with either you're, you're raw, real and relatable, and you just sh share who you are, or you just um, ultimately like you have to separate it, you know, and I have some people that have created two personal Facebook accounts as well. So you got to figure out what, how transparent you're willing to be. And then you kind of, at some point, create some boundaries around what you're posting. Um, I, I kind of push the boundaries as many people know. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's entirely up to you and, and you have to actually ask yourself that if you're willing to, to embrace that because you all have up to 5,000 opportunities at this point. And essentially, unless you can really track all those people at some point, use the birthday features to start going through and acknowledge that if you don't know who these people are, you got to ask yourself why they're in your life on Facebook. Cause, and if you had any communication history, so ultimately start thinking about refining your personal Facebook friends list. So you can give yourself room to create influence in, and those people that are not maybe people that you want in there and they're, they're saturating your newsfeed with fear or whatever it is that they are bad stuff. You might just want to remove them. So get some room in there. So for everybody here today, um, if you don't mind, just take a quick moment and in the chat feature, can you just share something that you've learned on this mastermind or you found valuable so far? I'd love to see what you guys have been taking away or what you've liked. Uh, just take a quick moment to share. It can just be one word. Anything that you sort of taken away so far, it'd be great. Um, it, so the things we've covered so far, obviously, uh, are the address only, some of the strategies, uh, how to use Facebook more as a CRM. Thanks for this for retargeting. Um, it's from Crystal, Leon, Harper Pages. I'm assuming you're talking about the ad masking, Steve Ski. Yeah, Marcus, Facebook friends, masking, retargeting. Thanks, Miles, Jay Chen. I like the last postcard with address only and combining with masks. That's what's so powerful about these group, uh, like these group calls is like there's so many things that we can cover. We need to hit up address only with postcards. Thanks, George. Don, you guys care about our success. Thanks, Don. That really does make our day. That is what this is all about. Masking from Matt Farley, masking address only, Tony. Thanks so much, everyone. I want to send cookies from Darling. That's awesome. Yeah, the free, Keisha's free. The free.com suggestions are always the bomb. So thanks, Leon. That's from Keisha. She loves your, your, uh, your free 99 ideas. Love the masterminds, dress only. That's awesome. So I'll, I'll keep an eye on some of these as they're coming in. One other thing that we're looking for, and I'd actually mentioned this on a few masterminds ago, uh, is that we were working with a Zapier integration with HomeBot and we ran into a problem because we weren't passing the zip code on our end. Well, it just so happens that we have updated that and we've made that. So for those of you that are also using HomeBot, we actually need a few people that we can test this new API with. So we can make it public. But it's actually, I, so I just, even on this mastermind as we're going into it, I was testing it and it worked perfect. I have a HomeBot account and I had this the Zapier and Street Text account. I was able to connect it. The, the only um, small, small downside on it is I believe you do need a paid Zapier account to make this connection work. We're actually going to be doing a direct HomeBot integration with Street Text as well. So we're going to be bypassing and making it even more robust. But for those of you that are pretty Zapier savvy, um, thank, Christopher, you obviously have a paid Zap. We're going to be looking for a few volunteers. So if you don't mind and you want that, um, just because of the, I'll, I'll, if you can go to the insider group and message me, so sliding and just say, hey, Steve, I want to do that Zapier and HomeBot integration with you. Um, at least five people I can test it with and then we can make it fully go live. So 
That's just a side note, but it's really cool. Basically, what happens now is lead comes in, goes automatically to HomeBot. You don't have to do anything. And I tested it. It gives the home value. We can break down the address, the city, the zip code, everything. It's all broken down and really easy to, to, to use. So, um, okay, great. Well, Christopher, you obviously are on my radar. I, George, let's do that. So, okay, sorry. Thanks for that little side note, but I think that'll be a really cool feature for people that are using it. Um, it is, I believe it is for paid zaps because, and this is not a thing on our end, it's just the way the HomeBot design. They designed it as a multi-step process. And I think with Zap, you need, I think you have to pay for multi-steps. I could be wrong, but I think you have to pay on that. So what we're actually going to do for you as a community as well, now that we know that, we're actually building a, a direct street text uh, integration with HomeBot as well. So that is coming so for all of you, you're going to have that as an integration going forward. But for those of you that want to just use it right now and you have, a, I think you need a paid zap though, I will have this available for you as well. But the nice thing about the zip codes and the way we've laid out this new update for Zapier is if you're using any other tools, like a lot of you use like YLOPO or use a bunch of other products um, that Zapier connects to, you'll now have the zip, the zip code feature as well. And not every app needs multi-steps like HomeBot. It's just the way that HomeBot designed it. You need a multi-step. So cool. How many of you want, how many of you want to see some more address only examples? Yeah. Awesome. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen real quickly. So by the way, it shows you when a friend request is accepted, by the way, it naturally shows up in your newsfeed. So why you want to start thinking about the friend request, dropping them to a list. <laughs> um, and here's Tony. Um, she accepted my friend request. So now she, I get to see the newsfeed so I can, it's a perfect place to put people on the list because once they accept the request, now you can see who's actually connected with you from that address only. And now you're going to post directly content to those people. Okay. So we'll, we'll talk more about what kind of content. Um, so we showed Chris Williams and again, we're, these are all in the street text insider group. So you can get your hands on this. Um, here's another example of it, right? So it's, kind of your brand here. Um, and, and again, we'll share all these in the insider group. Um, this was the one, one Donna did a long, long time ago. Um, and she's had some really good success with this. Just a little picture, you know, hey, Frederick, I researched the properties that are actors sold in your neighborhood over the last 90 days, depending on the condition of your home, would likely sell between, you know, A and B or higher, depending on the upgrades and updates. Um, you have a property in a hot market with nothing for sale like yours right now. I love that line. Um, since prices in that area is so diverse, I would love to come take a look so I can give you more accurate value of what I could sell your home for. Please let me know of a day, a good day and time. Even if you aren't ready to sell, simply having that information is always helpful. Really, really good verbiage there. And you can obviously twist and, and change that accordingly um, with some of the stuff that we learned today. Um, Stacy Sebastian. So this is a great example of a, a letter template and you guys can reach out to Stacy to see what she did here, but it shows you the, it's, it's obvious she's not handwriting this herself, but it's nice handwritten language on the card. So you can see right there how she's doing that. She's got her little EXP. That's her little business card. That's her Sunny and, and Ben brand. So she's really did really done well at branding herself. So she puts in that card to, to personally connect. You always want to make sure stamp your brand in there and let them see you as like, you need a picture at some, some portion of that, or else they won't identify you. Um, and here's another one. Colorful envelopes are always nice, right? That stands out in the mail when you're going through and trying to decide what you're going to put in the garbage. And what Brenda did here is she had her, her mask link too. So that's your call to action to get there to finish the home value process, right? Hi, if you'd like to know the value of your home, I'm happy to help. Go to the link below to get your home value in minutes. Call or text me anytime, et cetera, et cetera. So just some fun examples. Um, Susan Bailey, that's another cool one that she had, your London, Ontario home value. And then some stats around about the area. Okay, so, so again, all you got to do is type in address only or anything for that matter that's of, of importance to you. And we're going to start um, tagging all these things with topics as well so that everything moving forward, you can tag as a topic as well. So we can all aggregate all the information in one place so you can have a, a, a great resource for video email examples, automations, video CMAs. But it, it starts with you guys sharing the content that you're currently using so we can all build these resources for each other. 
That's awesome. I just want to highlight what Belinda said too, and, and I love this. Belinda wrote, I was reminded that the address only is a warm farm. Time to send out postcards. Core fact is my go-to since it's trackable. On it. I love it. And Belinda, thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. Awesome. Hey, the, this last eight minutes here is for you guys. So Q&A session. Open up, open up your, uh, your voice here and just talk, dialogue. Let us know about any wins that you've had for this past week or any, any things that are just kind of coming up to you. We'd love to hear from you. I have a question for George and Crystal. How do you get the video background behind you? <laughs> it's so awesome. And I, I, wanted, I wanted to do one like of one of my drone videos behind me like on one of my videos, but I can't get it to work. So on your Zoom, it says stop video. There's an up arrow. Click on the up arrow. You'll right. have whatever cameras you use. Choose virtual background. And then once you click that, you know, uh, sometimes they're preloaded, sometimes you gotta load them. And then you could just click on whatever you want and then switch it. If you don't have a green screen, it can be a little bit hesitation. I have a roll up green screen that I'm setting up and it works a little bit better. Yeah, if you don't have a green screen, it looks like this. You need a green yeah. screen or else you're gonna be well, all- you know, like my, I don't know if you fully need a green screen because no. they're like behind me and my, I got my little, I did this office one too. And actually, if you go to Canva, Canva has made a whole bunch of Zoom, and they're free. So you can go to canva.com, and if you got an account there, or you can just create a free account, type in Zoom, and they got a whole bunch of templates that you can download. Some of them are videos, too, and you can upload them to Zoom. That's Three ninety nine. Cool. Yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, you, you need to have a certain uh, yeah, processor nice. speed for it to uh, work, too. Yeah, what? I'm not using a green screen. I'm sitting in front of a window, but see, like, I don't know green screen behind me. So, but there is a little check bar, a, a box that you have to put a check in that says you're not using a green screen, and then it it filters it out. If you have the oh, box, yeah. If you if you don't check that box, then it it makes it all pixelated like yours looked, Marcus. Okay, here we go. Processing power your computer has. See? If you have a good enough computer, you don't need a green. Hey, screen. it works. That's yeah. the key. Check that check that box. I don't have a, a green screen, and you can have any background. There we go. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's what I did wrong because, yeah, it's coming through. You my, are. My hey, that's, comes through, so. that's what I'm talking about. Hey, you're, <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, you are your brand. So this is all awesome. Like, I, I love, like, Scott, what you're doing with your brand in the background and everybody who's got a brand. That's amazing. Get your brand yeah. behind you. Mine says computer does not meet requirements. Your computer does not meet minimum requirements to use this feature without a green screen background. Time to update the computer there. Uh oh. Yay! I love shopping. <laughs> well, that that. Yeah, I don't think it works on Windows Seven, Wendy. It could also be, you know, though it could also be camera that's doing that for you as well. Because sometimes, depending on the camera, so what I would suggest, go in and update the software for your camera. I use, a, some people use the built-in ones in their monitor. So if you've got one that's like, uh, I use a Logitech, you can go in and update the settings in that first and just see if that's what you needed to do. Because Microsoft had did an update on 10 a while back that changed a lot of people's settings. So it might be something that simple before you rush out and spend money you don't need to. Okay, okay. Well, you know you want to, and if you have your budget, get yourself an awesome MacBook Pro. And then I use the, I, the the cameras that come on the Apple products are eh. Um, I have a Logitech Brio, which is their highest end. It's not that much. You can get it on sale half the time for $129 and it's 4K and it has stereo microphones. It has three microphones that come out of each direction on it. So the audio is really clear without having to use a additional external mic. And so it's the one that you put on top of your computer? Yeah. Got it. Okay, I guess I'll be shopping because I want a virtual background. Yeah, I am using my spin bike all the time. I swear I use it. <laughs> no, so my, my strong suggestion to the group is go ahead and look, get that retargeting set up because I'm always one that preaches you've got leads that it's foolish not to use what you've already paid for. And if you can get retargeting set up and running, like I said, I've been running up. I initially put like a $5 a day budget, thought, ah, oh, just, you know, famous split test and see what I get. 
and I and I look and I go in and you know I check the metrics. I'm like, wow, this thing ain't spending much. But then it goes back to the thought: it's only going to the folks you already have. So instead of blasting out to forty thousand people in in your area in Facebook, it's just sending what you have. So if you've got four or five hundred leads that are sitting in there, it's going back out to them. So you know we always say you're trying to reach the masses in many ways. If you've already retargeting and it's going back out to the folks and you're going to do postcards and stuff like that, the it's cheaper ad cost for you to retarget than it is to do a mass mailing. And the thing about the retargeting is you can do the retargeting in no time. Your mass mailing is going to take you longer. So when, when you say time is money, if I can reach out quicker and you know, it only takes one to make a win, so to speak. So I would suggest doing the retargeting, getting that going. And then still work up the kind of ad campaign you want and take time to wander through the insider group and some of the folks that are um, doing some good mailings or whatever, please post them in there so we can see what you're doing. And then we can copy you like somebody, uh, somebody's Steve's people are copying him. Hey, I don't know if, if any of you caught the custom listing ad that I ran for, for my house the other day in the insider group. Yeah. You saw that. So that's, that's that Facebook lead ad is crushing it. And you can easily build your images using Canva. Steve actually showed me how to do that. Do you guys want a mastermind on how to actually use the listing ads? Yeah. Okay. Next week we'll, we'll work with some custom listing ads on the mastermind. Just show you some examples using Canva, which is a free thing. Well, and some pictures, it, it literally, I, I think I spent 30 bucks and got 20 plus leads total the doing so so everyone's gonna have a mission it's gonna use the address only strategies to get a listing for next week so we can we can do the listing uh we'll do the listing strategy and a virtual background and a virtu everybody wants virtual background yeah. converted a fizzbo with street text awesome and my video That's yep. awesome. i mean it, it doesn't help that they can't sell it during covid but hey i can <laughs> For everybody here, I challenge you to start using the insider group to post as much as you possibly can um, because we're all going to win together. So whether it's a video that you want some constructive feedback on, whether it's a mailer, whether it's an idea you had or a thought about what you're currently experiencing, start using it as a place to practice and definitely use it with video. Definitely use it with video. Drop in a video in there. Just, you know, this is going to be the best place for us to all win and share and, and mastermind together. And so it'll give us some things to talk about coming next week for sure. I do have uh, one thing I want to share. Now I'm going to just tell and warn everybody. Um, I haven't used it. It just came out yesterday. I'm looking into it. But what I, my goal is in the next two to four weeks, report to everybody because I have my fiance's credit card out and I'm going to go all in with it <laughs> and spend some money. Marcus, you got, can I get two minutes? Go for it, brother. All right, man. So we were all talking about what's going on with the virus and everything else. And I am Mr. Like, I wanna find out the coolest tech before anybody else does, before it becomes noisy, like Gary Vaynerchuk says. Um, and I, I stumbled upon this YouTube video, and I love YouTube. A lot of people watch Netflix, a lot of people watch cable, nothing against it. I go on YouTube and I just go down the rabbit hole. And I just wanna play 30 seconds about this because I think this is gonna blow your mind. Since we use Zoom and everybody's all about virtual showings, I have a 20 second clip that I wanna show you. And then I wanna look at it and break it down for what I found. It might work With out. Another user. Hey, open, open, share the screen big, George. Okay. And you get to, here you go, just like this, have a live call with anybody who else who also connects on the call. Hi, Michelle. Hey. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. Okay, so give me some feedback here. What am I showing you right now? I'm looking, looks like the, maybe the dime. So the cool thing about this and what this is is, it's a virtual tour technology, and I mentioned the Rico camera, and they had a great deal for a, a whole year. Yeah, you got it, Wendy. That's got awesome. It. Now, don't be mad at me. You got the camera, which for, you got it for free, but this service, now I'm going to show you, drop the screen down. Now, again, I bought a Matterport camera for my fiance's marketing business. A month and a half later, they came out with a new 4K, and I was, whatever, you can't stay with the technology. But if I click on the software right here, now, Wendy, you can do this. 
for $10 or $33 a month. And now they have a lifetime subscription. You, you pay for it once and you never ever pay for it again for $787. And you can send out, so you can do a virtual tour of whatever listing you have. You can send out now the uh, link to it to another buyer's agent and they can go through virtually with their buyer and walk through your home. This pandemic is making more technology companies like this come out, but two, this is gonna be almost like the new set standard. Instead, you know, Matterport, don't get me wrong, I love Matterport. We run our business, our marketing business off of it. I do every listing, 150,000 to 2 million off of it. But this could be another degree of separation where you can also do a demo video recording, send it out to your street text leads and go, look at this cool technology that I utilize. And when you list with me, 90% of buyers are online. This gives every buyer's agent an opportunity to virtually walk through your home without anybody disturbing you and walk with the buyer. I mean, the link, you send the link, it's live and it's MLS compliant right here. I'm reading up on everything and then you can white label it with your business branding for $33 a month. I saw this and I'm like, oh my, I told my fiance, I'm like, uh, I hope you're ready because I'm taking your credit card today, like going all in on this. I'm well, probably some be careful because some MLS will only let you do it if you don't have your branding on it. Correct. Like our so this is the thing. We have our marketing company, so we have it under a different brand. So that's how I get around that. But you can white label it to anything that's not linked to you. So instead of having the link and let other agents know what technology you're utilizing, come up with a Sue brand. Buy a domain that's like, unbelievablemarketing.com maybe that's available and then use that to hide it away from your other agents try and you know stay ahead of everybody stay ahead of the curve be different for 33 dollars a month to test it out now granted you do need a 360 camera and there's a whole bunch but now you can buy 360 cameras for 200 bucks 250. I haven't yeah, there's used a button, it there's a button on there that says enable mls compliance so i'm pretty sure that that's It'll what take out takes the away all the other things you're not supposed to have on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the $33 a month uh, package. So right now I'm actually shopping on, uh, on Dorama because I'm going to get a new 4K camera for her to utilize this. And then, you know, I was reading up on it. You can scan a whole entire house. Matterport takes her an hour for every thousand square feet. They're saying that you could shoot any house, no matter the size, in 15 minutes or less. Hey, I mean, George, I have a question because I literally just got my uh, Rico camera. I was unboxing it just now. Anyway, um, <laughs> isn't the software for that supposed to do what that cloud thing is? Like you get a year free, so I, I had a year free subscription to it. And it talks about Google Analytics and all of that yes, stuff. That they, they don't have this Zoom chat feature on there. Oh, to do the live. I got you. So this, I, just, I, I, I kind of made it really short, but on this, if I share and I go big, this is the founder of the company and he clues in his wife. Let me back it up just a little bit. So George, when you do this, when you, you got your camera and you got it all connected, you want to do, do a screen recording and show everybody and post at the insider group on all the, how that all connects. Like how do you get the camera connected to that software and then do an example. I think that would be a powerful, powerful opportunity for everybody to see. For sure, for sure. I'm excited. Super exciting. And I think going, going all in in video technology is gonna be super important for you guys to stand out in this market. That's why we're all, everything is moving virtually. So you need Zoom, you need things like Bomb Bomb or Dub or, and so forth. You need, to do, you need to be doing Facebook videos, Facebook video messenger, everything. Move towards video that's gonna be key like to separate you and create yourself as the influencer in your marketplace. And I wanna I want to springboard on the back of that, Marcus. Um, and I was kind of laughing. I've always done video. A lot of people are, are pushing virtual tours out there. I've got like virtual ones I use for mine. But under, understand this, to do something is better than to do nothing at all. But true video has higher relevance to Google than just the video tour that was stitched from pictures. So um, I'm not sure, and George, I'm gonna dig into that and look too, because if that's actually doing video, um, live video and turning it over, um, make sure you have a Facebook 
not for just Facebook, to make sure you have a YouTube channel to drive everything into and post it. Because the idea is once you post it in YouTube, stick it on your Facebook, go ahead and put it you know, on there like that. Because when Google does their searches, it's going to go to YouTube first. And then um, Facebook being the number three search engine gets tracked too. But the video will give you a higher ranking instead of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, instead of just virtual pictures. And if, if you're trying to sit here and be found, you want to be found by Google. And I mean, Bing as well would do this, but I'll just say Google because they're on YouTube. And so the relevance behind that, when you're posting stuff, also remember to tag your stuff in YouTube. So uh, let your heading be the address with the zip code. Go ahead and tag features of the home, feature community names, all that. So you're found. If you're going to do it, don't just think you'll stick it out there and, oh, everybody's going to find me. Um, you'll be found, but not as quick. So let other people continue to do it the wrong way. Go ahead and, you know, you guys do it the right way and you'll be found. I, I had a half million dollar deal I did last year because they were looking at one specific division and, and the gal was uh, Googling the community name and all of a sudden the video pops up. She's in my YouTube channel at five in the morning. I'm talking to her by nine and it took me a couple months to find my house, but they bought it. I mean, that 15,000 bucks, I, I take it every time. Gold. This is gold. All right, we'll let you guys go. I know we're eight minutes past the hour, but there's always such amazing value. Um, this will be uploaded into YouTube. Um, this, this is actually currently being recorded on Facebook Live, so you can watch it again for to pull more content. Um, and then anything that you want more clarity on, just you know, post it in the insider group. And let's just start. Just ask. Yeah, just ask. Just ask. Thanks, All everyone. Right. Thanks, All guys. Good.